Welcome everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to share 10 tips on Rule 20, so let's get going. Tip number one, advanced keyboard shortcuts. So this thing is a time saver. Uh, right here, use advanced keyboard shortcuts under the gear icon, under my settings. And when you have that turned on, you can click on this little icon here and it'll tell you what all the shortcuts are. But you can do things like type in M to go to the map layer, or K to go to the gym layer, or O to go back to object, or common to go back to go to lighting or O to go to object. You can change layers that fast. You can go to the measuring tool with the Q button. You can go back to the select tool with the S button. You can draw, you can do fog of war, you can do all sorts of things just super fast. That's tip number one, the advanced keyboard shortcuts. Tip number two, checking a line of sight. So line of sight in fourth edition works like it did in, I'm sorry, in fifth edition, works like it did in fourth and third edition. Here's a little uh, shortcut to it. So determining cover. That's on the Dungeon Master's Guide, page 251. You can choose one corner of the square you occupy and see if you can see the other squares, all the squares, the target's square. So if I want to check and see if Hasbeck here, the dwarf, can see these two orcs, I can use this tool. And I can use snap to corner and check these ranges out. So here, and then the keyboard shortcut for that is Q2. So let's do that. Okay, so here's a line from my corner to his corner. I can, that's clear. I can see that corner. That's clear. I can see that one. That's right on the edge, so no. And that one's going through, so no. So I can see that orc. He's got half cover because I can see two of his squares. This orc, I cannot see at all. So that's a handy tool for checking line of sight. That's uh, right here under snap into corner, measuring, or it's also advanced keyboard shortcut Q2. Trick number three, compact tokens. So from this grouping here around this dwarf, you can see I like to set up my tokens to be very compact, so they're all contained within a square. The defaults uh, have them looking more like the ones down below here. And these guys, you can see their hit point bars overlapping the other guy. Their name field will be overlapping the guy below them. So I'd like to have that all contained within a square. So here's some of the things I do for that. Go to my settings again. And then... Um, I put the marker position, it's defaulted to the top, I put it on the bottom. So by putting it on the bottom, that gives me room for the health bar. Also, these markers are kind of nice in that they don't go past the edge of the token, they just kind of shrink down to be within the token, so that's good. And then the health bar, to get it, double click your token, and then it is bar location, I do top overlapping. You can do compact or standard. I do compact just to give me a little bit more room for the portrait or the picture that's on the token. Now that is tip number three for compact tokens. That's why I set them up. You can actually set this up um, in the game default settings as well. So let's go look at that. In your game, say I'm on D20 Play, AL is my game. I go to settings, game settings, and then I look for game default settings. And I can set the defaults for every new page I create and every new token I create. So I can set my bar location and top overlapping and compact there for every new token that I make. And you can set lots of other things here too. Very handy. All right, so that is game default settings. Number five, player avatar size. So down here, you have the names of all the players that are connected to the game. And Again, in my settings, you can adjust the size of those things. You can look at the names only, which is if you don't have video, I do that a lot. And if you have video, you can change the size of them right there. That's tip number uh, five. Okay, tip number six. This one is huge, the invisible token. There's a ton of things you can do with invisible tokens, but I'll just do room descriptions right now. So set up in your characters an invisible token. I have a spell invisible here. It's just a clear PNG file and then once I create it I assign it to a character and then I give it auras that only the owner can see and with that you have an invisible token that no player can see but I can see them. I can move them around and what I've done is I've assigned the character I have for this dungeon to these invisible tokens that have auras turned on and I just put them right on top of the room callouts and here I, if I click on it I have all these macros I've set up 
and macro A1, for example, is the description of area A1. So I click that, and here's the area description um, printed out to the players, and notes for me in the area. I can look at, say, what some of their magic items are. So say they find the Dread Helm. Here's the Dread Helm. It's a fearsome steel helm. When they wear it, their eyes glow red. So I can see that. Um, so the invisible tokens, that's just one thing I use them for, for the actual, you know, room descriptions, dungeon descriptions, stuff like that. Join other uses that we can go into in other videos. All right. Then tip number seven. That would be movement. So now you're ready to play your game. You got your token that the DM has assigned you to control, and I always have the players move using keyboard, using the arrow keys on the keyboard, because that way they can go square by square. I can see if they trigger any traps. I can watch them and see if they're doing their movement correctly or not. So my dwarf here, I can go um, 10 feet, 15 feet, uh, 20 feet, whatever. So keyboard shortcut, or keyboard arrows I use for movement. You can use the up and up and down, or up and left and up and right, or down and left and down and right to move diagonally to. So you can do that. All right, then this puts you always in, you know, when you drag your token around, always in a square. Uh, if you hold down the Alt key, for example, say this orc was a fallen comrade and I was going to stand in the same square as him, but I wanted to still be able to see a little bit of his token in case I wanted to um, modify it. So I would hold down the Alt key and drag my token just a little bit off center, and now I got them both in the same square there. If I hit the arrow key, he'll go back to, no, oh, actually he goes five foot from where I left him. I didn't know that. Interesting. If I move him with the mouse, he moves back to the center. So Alt key and move your, your guy where you want him. All right, that was tip number eight. Tip number nine, another way you can move your token is if you just um, left click and hold on your token and then start to drag it and either hit the Q button on the keyboard or tap the right mouse button, it will put down a measurement tool for you. And you can create waypoints in your movement by tapping the right mouse button again. So there is a waypoint there. And so my dwarf's got 25 feet of movement. Now actually it's going to be going through an enemy square, which takes an extra five feet. So if that enemy was an ally, he could go through a square and it'd take an extra five feet. So I could get to that far. So I go to there. Now, if you had looked on the screen the player was looking at or anyone else was looking at besides the owner of that move, they would see him then the path he took to move. Now, if I wanted to see, um, if I missed his move and I wanted to see, okay, where did he move? This is tip number, uh, tip number 10. I can click a token and type the X button and see his last move. Any owner of a token can do that. So as a DM, you should be able to do it with all of them, and players can do it with all the ones they control. So that's 10 tips. Uh, one bonus tip, though, you can kind of see there's a little bit of line of sight happening here. If you want to see what a player can see through his token, you just click on the token, and then hold down, and then click Control L, and that gives you the line of sight of that token. Nice. All right, thanks for watching. I'll be back with 10 more tips here shortly with another video, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.